Hello and welcome. I hope that you've watched the previous videos. And we're just going over some semi-real-world scenarios with our scripting. And uh, we've generated some fake data with some fake numbers and names. And we've calculated out some pension returns. So if I say uh, get monthly, it's going to calculate based on the spreadsheet we have that we've created with fake numbers and names. Uh, people's names, uh, their yearly retirement salary, and their monthly retirement salary. Again, these are some pretty high numbers. <clears throat> now, why would you do this? Again, as I mentioned last one, you could have calculations done like this in a spreadsheet. Truth is, though, I get a spreadsheet like this each year, and it doesn't do the math for me. So it's easier for me to write a script that looks at this and pulls all the information so that I can do that. Also, you can run this on a server, and you can generate either um, server-side output in pure HTML, or you can create something like a CSV file or JavaScript file or dump it into a database, at which point you can pull with different applications and interfaces. And today what we're going to do is we're going to generate some um, static HTML based on this information, uh, which is not the way I would do it as a server-side script. Again, I would output properly format stuff as a CSV or JSON, which we'll look at. Uh, but I just want to show you this as an option, because if you can code in any language, if you can do a print hello world or echo hello world to the screen, you can write server-side scripts. So here we're going to generate some HTML. Again, go to gitlab.com forward slash melox1000, search for my uh, project called documents-tutorials, download that, and that's what we're working in, the folder called yearly salaries, and um, I'm not going to review everything this time around, but here are the list of scripts that we have, and today we're going to be looking at this one, generate HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's go ahead and look at that code real fast. I'll say gen, dot, gen HTML, and here, make this a little smaller, <clears throat> again, this is not the way I would do it, but this is a way that can do it. We're saying that we're creating HTML, that's just output for the user. Then we're going to dump into that file some of our header HTML stuff all the way down to the body. Then we're going to create some rows, and that's where we're going to use our CSV file. We're going to basically use our previous script, uh, but output it so that it goes into some div tags, so it's formatted a little bit nicer. Add that to the salary HTML that we're creating, and then add the finishing HTML tags. So pretty basic and straightforward. I'm not going to go over this line by line because it's almost, it's 99% what we did in the last tutorial besides dumping the stuff into variables and then echoing it out to some div tags. But let's go ahead, uh, and then at the very last line of this code opens up the HTML just to make things easier for you guys. Uh, but you wouldn't have that last line if you're running this on a server, but when someone would run this, it would generate that from the CSV. So you can update the CSV, and as soon as someone visits the page, boom, it would regenerate it uh, without you know, and, and statically post it for you. So let's go ahead and run that uh, gen HTML here. And you can see that it created some fairly readable HTML. Very basic. Obviously, it could be a lot nicer. Uh, but, you know, that's what it was supposed to do. You can format it any way you want. Again, you can use CSV HTML to make this look however you want and you throw it on a server and anyone can you know, click on that link and it would automatically generate this. And then all you have to do, anytime you get a new CSV file for the next year, you replace the old one and boom, this automatically updates. You don't have to make any changes as long as the formatting of the spreadsheet doesn't change. So that's one option. But another option would be to take the CSV file and then have some your, your client side, pull that information and format it. And I made a basic example for you guys here. So again, I'll list out these files. And we have this javascript.html, which we can open, open dot, or sorry. I have an alias of open, which alias is op, uh, xdg open, but I want to pro type this properly so you guys don't get confused. We'll go ahead and open that. And nothing's going to display because we haven't generated the server side data, which normally you put in a database in some cases, but this, we're just going to generate a basic CSV file. So we have a CSV file that has the salaries, but we don't have a CSV file that has the retirement uh, income. That's what this script does. So let's go ahead and cut this out. And again, it's basically the same that we did in the last tutorial, uh, but here we're echoing out and we're using the pipe character as, um, no, no, yeah, 
Let's see. I forget what I have it to. Let's see. Java. Or sorry. This one's called monthly to CSV. It's going to generate that. And now we can cat out js.csv. Yeah, so basically we're going to have a CSV file, which is not necessarily the best option. JSON would be nicer, but I've shown in previous tutorials how to generate JSON from a CSV file. Um, but we'll have the name, and then we'll have the yearly retirement income and the monthly retirement income. And then we can have the client pull that. And this is my preferred way of doing that. Now that we've generated that, I can refresh this page. And of course, it's not going to work because it's trying to pull information from a file on your computer and web browsers try to protect you from not allowing that to happen. So you actually have to run this on a web server for this to work. So let's go ahead and I already have it in a web folder directory. So it's going to be under uh, localhost, no x1000, documents, dash tutorials, yearly salaries, javascript.html. And there we go. And I formatted this a little bit different than I did the static HTML. Uh, but here, each one's in its own little uh, bootstrap card. And we have their name, their yearly income, and their... That's not right. Something's not right. We did something wrong. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out why that's happening. And these numbers look right. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. We got an undefined because it's grabbing a blank line at the end. Um, let's look at our code and see what we're doing. So, control U. So I am here, I am grabbing the CSV file. I'm splitting it by each line. I'm saying to loop through that new array that we just created. When we split the lines, we put it into a thing called people. Each person is going to be split by uh, of the pipe symbol. The first field is going to be the name. The second field is going to be the yearly income, monthly income, and then here we're putting that in there. Everything looks right. Let's go ahead and open this up, network, and refresh the page. I did not realize this when I tested it before the video that um, things were not adding up. Oh, oh, it's not supposed to be salaries. I'm grabbing the wrong CSV files. So let's go ahead and fix that. So, uh, javascript.html, it's not salaries that we're grabbing. I believe it's JS CSV. Let's go ahead and refresh that. There we go. Those numbers look more correct. Uh, so, there you go. So, again, this is a little different. Um, we don't have a server side script generating the data real time. We have a script that we ran that dumped it to a CSV file, but in real reality, you would have something that outputs that, just like this, and it, then the server side, the client side, doing this. again, we probably have a blank line, and that's because there's a new line character at the end of the file, uh, so a quick way to fix that would be to go into our JavaScript, and we could put in a thing that says... We're going to add a if then statement here, and we'll say, uh, we'll actually do it down here. I'll just add it to here. You can put it wherever you feel most appropriate. But I'm going to say if name is blank, I think should work. I like to space like that. Then print the output, otherwise it won't. Let's go ahead and refresh this, and that's not right at all. Uh, so, if name equals, well, I'm saying if name is blank, print it. I want to say if name is not blank, print it. There we go. And that won't have that undefined at the end. Again, that was just because there's a new line character at the bottom of the CSV file. So it's reading a blank line and it's like, oh, there's no information here. Uh, but that's just another way to do it. Obviously, you would format it however you feel looks nice. This, this, I just did this real quick and created these little cards. Um, you colorize in difference, different fonts, whatever. You know, that's up to you. Uh, but I wanted to show you that as an option. So, again, as far as outputting information to something outside of the shell, you want to create a GUI information uh, inter interface. I always like HTML because I like anything that's plain text. Plus, everybody has a web browser on the machine already. Um, 
the one option again is the static HTML, which um, I was about to say doesn't use any JavaScript, but it actually does because I, I I didn't write any JavaScript in it. So if we were to look at our uh, salaries.html file that we generated, uh, let's go ahead and just remove this and this and this. That's going to give us errors most likely. Let's go ahead and go back to actually we'll just go here and we'll go salaries HTML no that seems to have worked any errors in the console no no errors so uh, my template that I use for making HTML has bootstrap and stuff in it uh, but we didn't use any of that JavaScript so this text so if someone's using a browser that doesn't support JavaScript or they block JavaScript this server-side option would be an option but I think it's very sloppy I much prefer just to pass a CSV file or a JSON file to JavaScript and have the client side generate it. Um, it also makes it a lot easier. Let's say I was a user and not that file, this file. And I look at this and I go, oh, this information is great, but I don't like how it looks. I can easily write a plugin for my browser or even just look here and go, okay, refresh this and go to network. What's it grabbing? Oh, it's grabbing a CSV file. I can ignore the rest of this and I can just, I can grep this myself if it's running on a server, or sorry, wget this myself and forget all the other stuff. And for me, uh, that's one of the reasons I love uh, web interfaces that don't try to block you from doing stuff like that. It, I might not like what you have and there's lots of websites that are like that. I need the information, but I don't like how they format it. I can just scrape the stuff myself and if they do it good like this you don't even need to scrape it this is very easy I just can copy this URL and I can say wget and say output to the shell give it that and there we go I have the information the rest doesn't matter to me uh, it, to me that's a great thing anyway now I'm just babbling I thank you for watching hope I didn't lose you towards the end of this uh, we did a lot of stuff uh, but people ask for real-world scenarios, and real-world scenarios uh, are tends to be more than just one or two commands. You tend to have to do a number of steps to do what you want to accomplish. But I hope you saw how this works, the concept, and you found it useful. If you have any questions, be sure to comment below. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.